hi everyone again. Remember what we did last week? Uh, we had a session on uh, sustainable businesses and sustainable business practices, and we talked about a sustainable marketing plan. Um, and then we had a chance to go up to the building areas and we had a visit to all of your uh, projects. So with each team, Saitram uh, asked some questions about what are you marketing? So uh, what is your unique selling proposition? Meaning what is the product? What are you selling? Uh, and most of you have both the product and a complementary service or a product with it. So you have to decide on what is the initial and main product that you are selling and what is their, well, what's its um, features when compared to the competitors in the marketplace. So you have to make something different than the competitors. This can be your product only, this can be your pricing or your marketing strategies, which we will talk in detail today. So um, last week you were not assigned any task assignment, but this week we are going to talk about uh, marketing campaign plan, uh, which will involve all the tactics that you will be implementing. So uh, we will go deeply in more into social media, the use of social media. We will talk about the social media marketing strategies and I will give you an outline of a marketing campaign plan. We will talk about it and later on you are going to uh, start filling that marketing campaign plan for yourselves and uh, during this class uh, at the end, we will again go to our building areas and we, we will uh, all be split into your teams and you will have like 15 minutes where you will be uh, talking about shortly about what your slogans will be, what are your unique selling propositions, uh, which social media platforms you are planning to uh, work on. So, and then we will have uh, a discussion together on your findings. So that will be our initial start about how to start preparing your marketing campaign plan. Uh, so now you can see my slides at the back and the same slides are also on the left side of me too. So you can um, follow from wherever you want. Um, so to begin with, uh, first of all, uh, we should uh, be talking about why do we need a marketing campaign uh, plan. Um, we know that we are surrounded with a lot of advertisement around us. So we call it as marketing actually, but marketing is far more than just making advertisements in TVs, print medias or social medias recently. So um, for example, you have already built your products and you spend a lot of time uh, making research, uh, spending a lot of time learning skills how to, on how to build a product and object in Second Life. So that was brand new to most of you actually or the ones who already had that skill, they had the opportunity to progress on that. And you made amazing things. Uh, but we know that uh, production is somehow easy, let's say, but the most important thing is to sell those products to your target audience, to the target people that you're aiming to sell to final consumers. So uh, now you, are built, you have already built your product in this virtual campus, you have the building area, but uh, have you had any visitors in this area or uh, if you have already launched your product in the marketplace for sales, did you record any sales? Has anybody had any progress with that? So not yet, I guess, because uh, if we have not promoted our product, meaning if we don't communicate it to our potential buyers, then nobody will know that such a product exists in the marketplace. You may have already built the most superior product or the most innovative one that no one has thought about in metaverse world. But still, if nobody knows about it, if we do not communicate it well uh, to our target consumers, then we won't be conducting any sales. So this is very important uh, to market your products well. So uh, we need to create awareness among our potential buyers. Uh, we need to explain about its use, its features, its price, where they can purchase this product. So uh, in order to accomplish this all, 
uh, you need to have a marketing campaign strategy, a campaign plan, which involves the best strategies that suits your brand. And to do that, you have to know what are your main features? Who is your target audience? What are you selling or marketing different than your competitors? Why should a person think about yourself? Why should one buy that product? What benefits does a consumer get from buying that product? This can this won't be only the physical or the virtual features here, but you will be selling an experience. So we all evaluate a product on not just the purchase that I made, but the after sales and the experience I had while buying the product. So the environment that I go through, the atmosphere where you sell your product is important. So the selling area is important. Who is selling the product? Is there, a, for example, let's say, uh, interactivity there? Is that interesting? Does it create awareness? So do you give enough information to your consumer about the product? If the product is a complicated one, uh, particularly. So uh, in order to do that, we have to know our product well. While knowing the product, we were talking about the four Ps, the marketing mix that is about me, the marketing uh, mix, the four Ps of marketing. But first of all, we know that a plan is always uh, a good way to start. So it will provide us a direction. So uh, how we are going to, it will allow all the materials of what we are planning to, to do, how we are going to do it, when we are going to do it. So it will all uh, include all of these parts. And if you have the proper instructions and guidance there, uh, it will help both you and your team uh, to know that what you are planning to achieve and how you are going to achieve it. So all your team members will be also uh, in, the same pro in the same mindset as you are. So it improves the efficiency of your team too. So making a plan is important. The second one, it will reduce all most of the risks that you are going to encounter. So um, if you make a plan, you will have the chance to foresee the unexpected situations and any uncertainties that you will see. So knowing them or predict predicting the future will help you to become prepared for it so it will be reducing the risks the third uh, important part here is that it will encourage you to innovate new ideas when you're uh, working on that plan you will be with your team working on, in, on a lot of different aspects and while talking about those or thinking about it you will come up with new ideas different ways of doing things so it will also help your creativity. And know that please marketing campaign plan will always make you one step ahead. It's important to make a plan there. So um, in the process of making a plan, first of all, you will have some goals and strategies. To do those, first of all, you have to describe the fundamentals for developing the strategies and your plan, and which is the marketing mix. Has anybody heard of marketing mix before? The four Ps of marketing, please. If yes, please type by. Yeah, another four things to do, yeah. <laughs> Marketing may seem like simple, but there are a lot of aspect, aspects that you have to think about. So starting, starting with the four Ps. First P is the product. The second is the price. We have the place and the promotion. Actually, it's plain and simple. The product refers to the actual good that you already, the product that you already made here, let's say in the metaverse platform. So uh, this is the offering you give, you have for the market. So for the product part, you have to make decisions regarding uh, the design of your product, the technology, the features, the branding. What is the brand, for example? What is the slogan? The uh, packaging of it and the quality of it. So I'm actually talking here uh, on involving both uh, the physical life and the metaverse life here. So uh, product is important i have to now now you already know that you have already created your product so you have all the features you know what it looks like you have made you already made a lot of decisions on your product you know about technology you have already uh decided on 
it's a uh, difference than the competitors. So you have a unique selling proposition. So who do you aim to sell? At? Sell. What is your price? So you have made a lot of decisions so far. The second one is the price. So everybody has to determine a price level for the product. Uh, we actually discuss for this one for uh, one of your uh, projects here, uh, and that we know that uh for this project for this course actually we are aiming to create generate sales so pricing is a matter of fact here so uh, you have to determine the right price and the pricing decision will uh, take into account your production costs your competitors prices you have to check the uh, marketplace here to see uh the other prices of the brands and the perceived value meaning whenever a purchase uh, when a consumer purchases your product uh, think about the attitude, uh, the feelings, and satisfaction he or she is going to have. So this is a package. Uh, okay, the product may be useful, but does it satisfy the uh, needs of the customer? Does it have a good design? Is it something wanted in the marketplace? Is it different then? Or if, does it make me, for example, if I use that product, if, do I become a trend person? Or the, how, what, what does it change in my life? Uh, for the luxury brands, we know that when we buy those items, we feel more prestigious. And um, that brand's identity just transfers, transfers to us and using a luxury brand makes us become maybe more prestigious and superior than the others. So uh, this is an experience and the perceived value is that a whole package. For the place, this is known as mostly the distribution, uh, where you are planning to sell your products uh, and because customers have to know where they can reach that product. Uh, so we will be uh, here uh, talking about your distribution channels where you are selling that product. Is it only in the building area here? Are you placing the product in the marketplace too? The promotion part is what we are going to talk mostly about today. So uh, it always involves the activities that a company does uh, to communicate the benefits of uh, your product to your target market. So it will include advertising, public relations, sales promotions, and personal selling. And those four P's helps you to make a comprehensive marketing strategy. Uh, so you have to set your marketing mix. So you have to decide on all, for, on all the aspects of these four items here. So how can you promote your brands in the metaverse platforms? Um, this is what we are, what we refer to as metaverse marketing, which we already talked about last week, but I will give you some tactical ideas here, which you can use in your marketing campaign plan. So metaverse marketing means promoting your products, services, or brands in this virtual or augmented reality environments. Uh, so uh, the aim here is to deliver your target advertisements and your marketing messages to your consumers. So uh, within this world, you can utilize from this highly immersive and personalized marketing campaigns. So everything is more easy to do, implement here. And I will mention about a few popular advertising techniques that are used in the metaverse, as you can see in the slide. First one is virtual experiences. So you can uh, create immersive and interactive experiences here within the metaverse. So this will be um, help you to uh, make engagement with your uh, engagement between the user and the brand. So you can make, for example, virtual showrooms here, which most of you already have. You can design interactive games uh, when your consumers just visit around your selling areas. Uh, you may plan interactive games where they will you are planning to get their interests. And if they are interested in the product, they will get more information about the product. And if they are convinced, maybe they are going to purchase the product. So that's what we are planning to do. That's our expectation. Or you can make virtual events here. Uh, another thing is the influencer collaborations. Last week, we, talk, we talked about the uh, virtual influencers here. We already know that from the social media platforms, influencers are a very good uh, marketing tool because they create awareness, they have a lot of followers, and they have a great impact on making direct sales uh, by the links that they share. And it's very easy to measure the success of that influencer collaboration. 
because you know how many people clicked on that link and how many of them purchased the product or not. So we we have a return and input investment and we can see at those rate we can see the ratios there. Um, for your marketing campaign plan, please uh, think about both the virtual influencers in the metaverse platforms, if you can find any, mostly regarding Second Life. And you will be also creating social media accounts in social media platforms. You can also maybe think about uh, working, collaborating with those uh, social media influencers too. So think about the influencer collaboration. Another thing you can do is the native integrations called as uh, so integrate your brand into the metaverse environment so you can place your branded objects within the virtual worlds uh, and incorporate your products into virtual gameplays, let's say. So uh, there, that will be a brand fit in different areas where the user experience is happening in this meta world. Uh, another thing is a social media engagement. You can uh, leverage from social media platforms because we know that uh, in a few minutes, I will be talking about the importance of social media, social media strategies. We know that social media is used wi widely across the globe and the numbers are rising each year. And uh, social media and the virtual worlds are hand-to-hand -hand, uh, utilizing from each other. So think about the social media engagement and you should uh, look for platforms that are best suitable for your brand to promote. Maybe you can look for brands from metaverse platforms who also market their products through social media uh, platforms and see which platforms do they use and or what kind of contents do they have to promote those products. Maybe you can benefit from that and benchmark from them. Personalization and customization are important too because we know that personalization is important for consumers and that because that means that you are tailoring your products uh, and your marketing efforts according to uh, meeting the specific needs of your target audience. So that's important because it creates brand loyalty, meaning um, when a customer feels a strong connection with your uh, brand and receives, let's say, personalized um, offers or recommendations, uh, they are more, more likely to remain loyal to your brand. And in their next purchase, they won't be looking for other brands. So that will be loyalty. And that's very important for marketers because we want to build long time relationships with our uh, consumers. That's why it's important and it will create higher level of engagement. So look for where you can make personalization at your product that will be, that can be at the production uh, part or that can be at the selling uh, part too. So uh, think about a customization uh, offer you can make. Now, why is social media that much important? Um, the social media strategy is an outline of the content that your business will post, the responsibilities of your social media team and the social media channels you will use to promote your business. So it's a way to promote our business and our brands. That's important. Uh, so it's like a master plan uh, for how you are going to create, post and engage with your social media content. So engagement is everything and social media is a very good way to do that. So uh, it will include uh, your social contents, uh, your posting frequencies. So how many times you are going to post during the week, during the day, uh, what kind of content you are going to share uh, your target audience and how you're going to make engagement strategies because there are a lot of different ways to engage with your uh, audience in the social media. And I know that Generation Z and you are really capable of doing this and you are using the social media very well. Uh, so uh, you have to promote your business through the social media too. And why do we need a social media strategy? Um, actually, before this, I would like to ask to you, um, what are the social media networks, the social media channels that you most frequently use, that you are most active at? Which social media platforms are you most actively at? Oh, it's Instagram.
Is anyone, is there anyone who doesn't have a social media account? Okay. Besides Instagram, what other social media platforms are you, uh, do you have an account at? Twitter, which became X, Pinterest. Yes, most of our students have accounts on LinkedIn. Does anybody have a Facebook account? Sidetime you too. Okay. Facebook nowadays more seems like old fashioned, but we know that yeah, technically Instagram is owned uh, is owned by Facebook, and you can share your uh, content for Instagram at the same time at Facebook too. So Instagram allows you to use Facebook at the same time if you may give permission for for the. Uh, uh, for the app, uh, but as far as we can see, Generation Z is not much more likely to use Facebook. Instead, they love Instagram, they use X, and they use different social media platforms too. So, um, and all of them have different contents, and uh, their aims are different. And we will be talking about them uh, in a minute. Uh, so we know that. All the people have social media accounts here. Uh, we know that internet usage all around the globe, globe is very high. Uh, and many people have social media accounts and this number is rising by year by each year. So um, regarding the business part, how you can generate sales revenue from social media is very important too. Uh, it's seen that social media communities are critical and will be critical for increasing engagement. Uh, I read a report uh, involving the 12, 2023 year um, results of uh, surveys conducted for social media usage and mostly most of them were made on social marketers, social media marketers. So it says that 90% of social media marketers says building, building an active online community is crucial to a successful social media strategy. Um, because social media is the connector of your brand and your potential customers. That's why it's always worth investing on it. Uh, it's, it, it increases engagement in social media. Second one is Amazon it says, watch out because social media is becoming the preferred e-commerce platform for consumers. So uh, people are buying products <clears throat> from on Instagram actually, and other social media platforms like TikTok and others. There is a way to purchase there. So, 25% uh, of social media users who were aged between 18 to 44 uh, bought a product on a social app in the past three months uh, this year. So, um, social is the preferred product uh, discovery platform for those consumers. And they are known that 80% of social media marketers believe that consumers will buy products uh, from directly using the social apps. apps. So, uh, and they are now ignoring to check the websites or purchase from the websites or the third party websites. So social media platforms are the uh, direct ways of purchasing items. So that's why social media platforms are have in, uh, will be more popular in the upcoming years. Another important thing, important thing is resharing the same content across uh, platforms won't fly in 2023. Uh, we know that uh, in the last years, uh, this was just simply posting a message or video to one platform, and you will you were only you, you need to only copy and paste it to the other platforms. But now things have changed because the uh, followers, the consumers, don't reward those reposted contents. So they don't like it. They don't prefer watching those. So they want something original and authentic for authentic for each social media platform.
Um, so this means that uh, you need to make, if you're planning to create accounts in different social media platforms for your brand, you need to create, create different content for each platform because most of the platforms uh, may seem like they have the same audience and same type of followers there. But we know that, for example, Facebook is old fashioned. In the, the generation from X, Y to Z, both or all of them are using Instagram. LinkedIn is different. LinkedIn is mostly used for corporate uh, people uh, and uh, people who are looking for jobs. So people more involved in the business life. Uh, but still, it's a different way of advertising and promoting your brands, your companies to your followers or to a potential audience. So you have to generate and create content for each of the platform uh, specifically. So uh, the most memorable type of content, it was asked uh, when, uh, for example, the last time you scrolled through uh, your social feeds, let's say in Instagram, what made you, what made you stop, they asked. And the answer was, uh, when something seemed funny or made them laugh. So that was the time uh, that they had to stop and check that post. So this shows, that, shows us that um, we are valuing uh, brand values that are mostly uh, funny to us, that have funny content, that are trendy, uh, educational and relatable content. So we value those. It's important to know what kind of contents are uh, takes the interest of consumers. That's how you are going to prepare your own contents to uh, your potential buyers. And there's also, the last thing is, uh, the posting frequency is important, meaning we already know that brands who post a lot of posts or share a lot of uh, stories or reels during a day may be boring, but uh, so setting the exact or most suitable uh, frequency for posting stuff in the social media apps is very important. And there's another thing. It says that uh, there is the best times where you should put when you should post your uh, content in social media channels. That is from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and along with 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. So these are the times uh, which are best uh, time to post uh, your content because uh, many social users are uh, they're done working and looking for a chance to maybe recharge. Uh, so they are looking for interesting and engaging content at those uh, times. So that will be times you should be posting uh, content. Yeah, so how to increase digital sales with your social media? So first of all, choosing the right social media platform is very important because each platform has its own unique advantages and uh, use cases actually. So uh, your brand should fit one of those social media platforms or more than one. Uh, and uh, as we can see, uh, each of them has a different audience and demographics of, of that audience is different. So uh, if, for example, we made a comparison between the social media uh, networks, uh, what do you think about the users of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn? What are your, what are your thoughts? Who are using these channels? Is there a, a certain difference among these that makes one of those platforms ahead from the others or differentiates us along, among from the others? So they're all the same. Has anybody shopped from uh, Instagram, directly from Instagram? Another question, let's say you are using both Instagram and Twitter, you have accounts on both of those. When do you use Instagram mostly and when do you use Twitter? And what do you use, for example, Twitter for? Is there a difference in the aim you are using those apps?
Uh, Ginger says he's using Twitter to follow the news. Now for the actual news. Yeah, Barry and Merino are also saying the same. So they use usual Twitter for the news. Apart from that questions to me. Okay, what social media did you use for your business before you came here? Yeah, I did have a uh, entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurship experience before. So that was a time between 2010 and 2015. So uh, LinkedIn is always a good choice to present ourselves and our companies in social media. Uh, but still, uh, at that time, during the times that I mentioned, so we were using Instagram uh, and Facebook a lot. So now it's been like... Uh, 13 years ahead from that time. So things have changed, but now we can see that still Instagram is very popular. Uh, Facebook has mostly the generation X and uh, Y are using Facebook. Uh, so it's not that, so there's a lot of people. If you want to create a community, actually, Facebook has a lot of different communities, but now there are many different social media apps where you can find the exact community for your brand. Um, so let's say you are promoting, you have a brand, uh, a healthy product that you're selling. It can be like superfood like quinoa or something, a fruit like avocado, let's say. So people who consume um, healthy products and who are uh, conscious about the health, uh, so they have a lifestyle where they, in which they do sports, uh, they have a good nutrition. So uh, these people can be also vegans, vegans. Uh, and these can be also people who don't consume gluten, uh, so they use gluten-free products. So there are all communities. So you have to find, let's say, where those communities are. And Facebook has a lot of communities like those, uh, like mothers have communities, um, parents uh, have communities there still. So it has potential for something. So, yeah, the, how people... Uh, now, the, how we purchase, uh, our purchasing behavior changed actually by, by technology. We know that everything is easy right now. The e-commerce lets us do everything in a minute. So it's very easy to compare the prices, look for products, uh, and it's very easy to uh, purchase a product. But still, um, the social media works a lot. So you can diff try different uh, social media platforms. But my last question for this part would be, do you think... Uh, brands, companies, or businesses are promoting uh, their products through TikTok. Any examples for that? Which are the brands that are most suitable for uh, TikTok? Or maybe you can tell me a brand that should never post anything in TikTok. So clothes, yeah, you see a lot of technologies, makeup, brands. Since some companies are hesitating to enter TikTok because the audiences are is different, but the companies who are looking ahead and they see the future of Generation Z becoming the purchasers. Uh, so, and they are spending a lot of time in TikTok. That's why some companies are using TikTok, but still some of them do not uh, align it with their company missions. So that's why they may be just staying away from uh, the TikTok platform too. So each of them has unique uh, audiences, uh, demographics of the audiences may differ from one to another. So you should be uh, making a plan on which social media platforms to use, which uh, which which of those platforms just switch your brand, your brand identity. Uh, there you could, you should make a decision. And the second thing is, which we will be talking about, uh, is uh, what you're going to share inside. So what kind of content you're going to share.
So uh, leveraging user-generated content, the second one here, how you increase your digital sales with social media is important. This will involve encouraging the users to generate and share content related to your brand, um, highlighting your products, their experience with your product. So uh, this will also provide a social proof of your offerings value. So uh, now you are not the only marketer there. The users are also marketing your product. So the word of mouth is very important here. So the viral, the online word of mouth we are talking about. Uh, so they will be, users will be uh, seeing your posts and maybe they will be posting your product and making posts about your, their usage and their, their experiences. And this, these will be reposted or retweeted by a lot of uh, followers. So uh, that's a big world there. And because the user generated content is very impactful on other consumers, think about yourselves. Uh, we know we see a lot of advertisements around in TVs, uh, social medias, but still, uh, when a close friend of your uh, of you or uh, of yours or your family members, uh, and an influencer or a person that you value, uh, tells you that he or she used a product and that uh, he she was very satisfied with it, and she just proposed you to purchase it. So she says that okay, go on and buy it, you're going to like it. That was a super product, so I like it. So that is more impactful than all the ads you see around when you go out from your houses, you see the billboards, uh, you see the advertisements there, uh, you see the TV channels, you see a lot of ads there about the brands. So when you compare it with those uh, efforts of marketers, your friends, your family, your reference group is more impactful on your decisions. So that's why it's very important. The content, the uh, the experience that the other users have and what they post about it is very impactful. High quality content is very important. So whatever you share, uh, share informative posts. So uh, use images that will be eye catching. So like creating interest. So use, you can use entertaining videos. Uh, you can use those user generated uh, content someone using your product and just mentioning about uh, her or his experience about it. So those are all uh, actually affecting uh, people and making connections with them. Then creating a social media schedule is very important here. So uh, you should be uh, making a schedule where you outline what social media posts you are going to share on each platform and when you are going to do that. So that's the schedule of yours. Uh, the other step is to engage with your target audience. So uh, this is, we have already talked about this. Uh, so you are trying to create trust and credibility to do that. Uh, you should be sharing uh original contents and you should be engaging with your target audience. Nowadays, it's not very hard to do this. If you do not have any creative ideas about how to engage with your target audience, look for other competitors, what they are doing. Look, check the websites as Instagram accounts or the social media accounts of other brands and see what they are uh, posting there. And still, if you cannot do it, now there is AI, which I, I will be talking in a couple of minutes. So we are using AI in marketing too. So AI may just generate uh, content for you. But still, the thing is, uh, I have checked a lot of different AI programs uh, which marketers are using, but I find it very complicated because you have to know what uh, kind of data you want. Uh, so you have to define it. So you have to give instructions to the AI program there. So that is also, that means some skills, some capability there too. So. Uh, you have to know what you want from AI, so you have to make a plan, and inside your plan, you can ask from the AI what's kind of, kind of the, the type of contents that you want, and what is the aim of that content, what are you trying to achieve from posting your content. So if you give the information, the instruction right, AI will also help you to do that too. But still, uh, make your own analysis, just uh, make a research, go around other brands, check their social media accounts, and see what they are doing. And the last part will should be to track and monitor your results. Uh, so as I mentioned before, it's very easy to analyze the results in social media platforms because there are key metrics. Uh, so we can uh, look at the engagement rates. You can uh, look at the click-through rates there, the conversion rates, how many people clicked on the link or on your website and how many of them purchased it. So you can see a return in investment there. Uh, so that are very, very valuable insights for you. Do you have any questions so far?
Okay, some examples of AI usage in marketing communication. We know that artificial intelligence is increasingly playing an important role uh, because it revolutionizes uh, the market uh, and uh, as terms of marketing, it revolutionizes the marketing communication part uh, because it gives us a lot of uh, tools and capabilities there to increase our efficiency, to create personalization and our, and it increases our overall effectiveness. But still, as I mentioned before, you have to know how to use an AI to get the correct uh, the request, the expected results from there. So uh, you can use AI for customer insights and segmentation. So AI algorithms uh, analyze huge amounts of data. They analyze it and give us very valuable insights about uh, the consumer behavior. And this will uh, enable us to uh, create, uh, design our customer segments based on the preferences, uh, purchasing patterns, demographics. So, and we can also this way uh, create personalized communication. Another thing is personalized content creation. As I mentioned before, AI powered tools uh, generate personalized content uh, by analyzing the user data. So, uh, when, for example, an AI program uh, creates the content for you, a marketing content for you, uh, let's say it's a social media post or this can be an advertisement uh, in a TV or something else, uh, there it looks for, for example, let's say it's a post in social media, uh, it creates a post for you while doing that, uh, it looks at the hashtags, if that's uh, the avocado brand that you're selling, let's say, uh, AI goes back and checks all the data and sees uh, the most uh, searched hashtag for avocado, avocado, let's say. So, and it creates four different hashtags. That information is based on all the previous data. That's a huge amount of data. So according to that, AI makes an analysis and suggests that you should use, you should use these hashtags in your uh, posts if you want more uh, engagement with posts that you are sharing. Chatbots and virtual assistants, uh, so uh, they are also a good way to enhance communication uh, because uh, the chatbots and virtual assistants use AI to provide instant responses to our inquiries. So uh, that will improve customer satisfaction too. Uh, we have the predictive analysis there. So it's the AI algorithms can predict future consumer behavior uh, and it displays these on the historical data. Uh, there is email marketing optimization. Um, this is where AI also helps you to make email marketing. That's very important. Um, while doing it, uh, the important thing there about email marketing is that you need to use optimized send times. You need some subject lines. The content is very important. Uh, so uh, this has to ensure that uh, your emails are delivered when they are most likely to be opened and read. So the timing is very important there. And I, AI makes that optimization for you. The social media uh, listening and engagement. So the AI tools also monitor all the social uh, social media platforms uh, to analyze all the conversation going there, the sentiments, the trends related. Uh, so as a brand, uh, it will be analyzing all the uh, conversations about related to your brand or the corresponding industry that you are at. So that way you can make more customized uh, marketing messages. You can identify the correct influencers because there are a lot of influencers. So you have to choose the ones that are most suitable for your brand. And you know that uh, there are from micro, macro to nano, there are uh, different types of influencers and they are categorized into the number of followers they have. So uh, the nano ones, let's say, if they are the ones with the majority of the uh, followers, that doesn't mean that they are the most suitable for your brand, uh, because it's not about the, the number of followers they have. That's about uh, its alignment, its relation, relate, relatability with your brand, influencer relatability with your brand. Uh, the another thing is uh, programmatic advertising. So. Uh, that means advertising uh, automates uh, the buying of the ad space in real time. Uh, that's for optimizing campaigns based on user behavior. So uh, when to, uh, for example, show your advertisement to the right audience. Voice search optimization. Uh, so AI helps marketers to optimize content for voice search. 
So there they do the language processing uh, things. Uh, the sentiment analysis we have uh, and uh, dynamic pricing strategies. AI can optimize your pricing strategies uh, by the analysis it makes uh, in the marketplace. So uh, and, uh, AI goes back and checks all the market area, uh, the conditions there, the competitive prices there, and the customer behavior there, and helps you to just set the, uh, a, a dynamic pricing model. Another thing is augmented reality, the AR and virtual try-ons. Uh, so uh, AI also helps us, to, helps us to enhance our online shopping experience. Uh, so we can visualize our products in their own environments before making a purchase decision. So most of the brands are now trying to do this, like IKEA, uh, the furniture shop uh, has already made their AR app where you can uh, just put inside, you can you take a photo, a 360 view of your of the photo of your uh, of one of the rooms in your house, let's say, and then it uploads it to the AR app, and there uh, you can select any furniture you want and place it in uh, your the, the uh, AR version of your room, and there you have the opportunity to see uh, how the products fit your place or not. So, do you like the color? Do you like the size of the, of the furniture? So it will just, and it enhances your uh, shopping experience there. So uh, these are most of the places that AI usage is used in marketing communication. And there is a lot of things you can uh, benefit from here. Any comments in this part or questions? Okay, now uh, the last part of this uh, class will be uh, the marketing campaign plan, uh, which we will be responsible for your task assignment. And also you will be handing in this for in the final report that you are going to give us at the end of the semester. And in your presentations, you will be also mentioning about your marketing campaign plan. So we will be also sending you this outline uh, in written uh, through your groups. So the first uh, step in uh, creating a marketing campaign plan is always defining the target audience. So who are we going, are we planning to reach by using uh, this uh, engagement, uh, sorry, this, this uh, marketing campaign plan. So uh, we have done this before. Uh, so you started your business plan by setting out uh, your exact target audience. So please go back and check while after after you are finished with now you are finished with your products your with your project so now it's the best time to go back and check your marketing plan so far so things may have changed there may be revisions to be done so define your target audience the second one is setting your campaign objectives here you should be uh, defining some specific measurable achievable uh, and relevant objectives for your uh, efforts in marketing campaign plan so uh, you should consider some goals such like um, creating an increasing brand awareness, driving traffic to your, let's say, social media accounts, or boosting your engagement in metaverse platforms. So you should find ways to do that. So the third part will be crafting a compelling uh, virtual uh, product story. So there you should develop a narrative that highlights the unique features and benefits of your products. Here you can consider the immersive aspects of the metaverse and how the product fits into users' virtual lives. That's important. So uh, the fourth wheel part will be creating the content. Um, create some immersive visual content, meaning you can develop visual accompanying uh, content that takes advantage of the immersive nature of the metaverse. So think about what you can actually uh, make in this metaverse world. So how the content will be um, you can use in the fifth step, implementing gamification and interactive elements there. So that's the important way to create engagement too. So uh, in your advertising campaign, you can make virtual challenges, quests, or interactive experiences. So this is the fifth step. Uh, the sixth step is uh, encouraging uh, user engagement. So uh, 
using the interactive content, which the Metaverse platforms in Second Life, you can do this by the scripts that you already learned and used. You can create interactive content there. So that will create interest uh, to your uh, potential buyers. So think about any idea, think about ideas there. The seventh step will be leveraging virtual uh, influencers and collaborations. Uh, so look for uh, if you can find any virtual influencers in Metaverse world. And also in the eighth step, you are going to mention, mention your social media marketing strategy. There you'll be working with this uh, prospect influencers in social medias too. But this, for the seventh uh, step, uh, think about the virtual influencers in Second Life. So how you can collaborate with them uh, identify influential uh, people that will be uh, able to promote your product. So how you can collaborate with them. So think about ways to uh, solve this one too. And establish collaborations or partnerships to leverage the influence of virtual uh, usage in uh, promoting the product. So uh, here, uh, other than virtual influencers, you can think about collaborations with other communities. So. Uh, this can involve both of both ways. So think about collaboration with communities and think about uh, collaboration with the virtual influencers. In the eighth step uh, is the social media marketing strategy. Uh, your products are produced and sold in the metaverse world. We know that, but still uh, social media usage is a good way to promote your products, as I mentioned before. So you, should, you will be just setting up a social media marketing strategy. Here, uh, first of all, identify your target audience on social media and set clear objectives uh, here or expectations on social media marketing. Second one, choose an appropriate social media platform or more than one. And there you will be developing content uh, and creating visuals. You can use apps uh, like Canva or the other ones, uh, whatever you, you would like, you would prefer and create some examples of posts, tweets, or stories, or reels. Create your slogans, create a brand identity there. So you will be creating some visuals there. It's not uh, hard to now, nowadays, uh, create visuality. But the thing is, you should consider the best uh, strategy there. Uh, and you can also, when you create your strategies, please uh, just uh, create some examples of posts, or stories, or reels uh, that you are planning to uh, just show to the public. So the other part is the engagement strategy. Uh, here, uh, you will be uh, defining how you will engage with your audience. So including uh, maybe responding to comments, messages, participating in conversations with your audience. So uh, how you will enhance uh, the community uh, around your brand. So make a schedule. So if you were to uh, just start uh, posting in social media platforms, what is your social media schedule? So uh, think about as monthly or weekly schedules uh, for your social media accounts. Uh, think about collaborations and partnerships in social media about your product, which is sold in the metaverse world. So if there are any, you can create some collaborations and create projects there. And uh, budget allocation is the last step here. So uh, you need to finance uh, to just create the strategies and implement it all in both the metaverse world and the social media platforms. So uh, think about how much uh, finance you will need. Uh, and um, here, consider maybe the costs associated with the uh, content creation, advertising, and or any of the tools that you will be use, uh, using and resourcing from. So uh, this is all for the uh, marketing campaign plan.